What's going on everybody? This is Jeff with Living in Arizona and today we are going to talk about laws in Arizona. Some laws that you didn't know of, some laws that you're going to be grateful that you just found out about. So this is, if there was ever a video that you might want to watch until the end, this is probably going to be the one. So uh, there are, at the end we are going to do the goofy laws, you know, the ones that kind of every state has. That's what we're going to talk about. But going through this video, we're going to talk about everything from drinking and driving to guns rights to uh, cutting down cactuses and that's where this originated from so we had this unique picture posted in our group living in Arizona which you can join link below I encourage you guys all to join there because we always have a lot of stuff going on and if you're interested in living in Arizona or moving to Arizona you're gonna want to join this group I'm telling you but uh, cutting down a cactus in Arizona could result in prison time so uh, someone said, oh, they wanted to go, they saw a pretty cactus out in the desert, and so they just wanted to, you know, do something that seems innocent enough, go out there with an axe and just take a little piece of the cactus and take it home. Well, you can't do that. It's illegal. And so, um, you know, I, I put that out there. I said, should I make a, a video about laws in Arizona? And you guys said, yeah. I mean, 50 people liked this post and 21 people said, yeah, especially fines associated with getting stuck in flash floods, such as the stupid motorist law we're going to talk about. That came from Jeff Feeland. And then um, Juan Valdez says, start with DUI laws. AZ laws are tough as it should be. Don't drink and drive. Okay, so let's go ahead and talk about this cactus first, okay? And then we'll get into the other stuff just because I have a whole list of stuff to go through. Cutting down a cactus in Arizona could result in prison time. Think, think that cutting down a cactus in Arizona is probably like cutting down a tree anywhere else? Think again. If you cut one down without permission, you could go to jail for up to 25 years. Clearly, this is not a mistake you want to make. Okay, maximum sentence. The reasoning. Why did they do this? One important thing to note about this law is the wording. Maximum time you could get is tw a jail in jail is 25 years. This is not a mandatory term that is handed out to everyone. If you make an honest mis mistake you're far more likely to get a lighter sentence if the judge feels like throwing the book at you, though you could technically be locked up for quite some time. So what if you're building a house and there's cactus on there? How do you get rid of it? That's something you guys have to look into. I don't have the answer to that. But the reasoning is the reason this law stands is because the Soro cactus prevalent in Arizona takes an incredibly long time to grow. These plants have a lifespan that is estimated to be from 150 years to 200 years if they are cut down and if they hit the right conditions. As such, when they are 10 years old, they might be tiny, perhaps under two inches tall. Okay, so it's mostly to protect the saguaro cactus, but there are other cactuses that you have to be aware of. Okay, so let's move right along here to the next, uh, the next list of stuff we're going to talk about. Medical marijuana laws in Arizona. What is legal and illegal? So this is another subject that is really relevant these days with the recreational use in California, Colorado, Oregon, and Washington. It is not uh, it is not recreational in Arizona. We've actually made a video specifically talking about this, but you might want to understand uh, this law, okay? Um, because if you do smoke and you don't have a card, it is illegal. And that card is only due for, or only legitimate for a year. So here we go to another thing that comes up, the stupid, stupid motorist law. So this here, you can see on City of Phoenix, a driver of a vehicle who drives a vehicle on a public street or highway that is temporarily covered by a rise in water level, including groundwater or overflow of water, and that is barricaded because of flooding is liable for the expenses of any emergency response that is required to remove from the public. So this means when there's big storms and you have a flash flood, if there's a river or a creek, if you live on the other side of the creek and you have to go through a wash and it's flooding and you get in that car and you need to be rescued, they're saying that you could be liable or that you will be liable for the expense. That means that if if, if you clearly see it, obviously, if you don't see it and it hits you, I don't know if that applies to you because then you're, you know, that's, that's not your negligence. But so driving through creeks or rivers, if you have to be rescued, it's going, it's going to come out of your pocket. So that's called the stupid motorist law. Now, another one that comes up, red, white, and ouch. Phoenix Fire warns public about dangers of fireworks. So yes, you can buy fireworks here in Arizona but not the ones that go into the air. So if you are 
if you are um, going to celebrate on these dates, you can only the, the 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 sale of permissible consumer fireworks is allowed May 20th to July 6th and December 10th to January 3rd. So that's New Year's holiday time and Christmas, and then also on the 4th of July time. I'm surprised they even let it happen uh, around <laughs> July. Actually, that's crazy or because it's that's when it's the driest. Winter, I can understand why uh, they wouldn't allow that. But for 4th of July, even though it is a high, ho holiday of fireworks, but a lot of fireworks or fires happen in Arizona because of fireworks. But uh, so the kinds that are permissible include cyl cylindrical and cone fountains, illuminating torches, wheels, ground spinners, fitter sparklers, ground sparkling devices. Okay, so fireworks that stay on the ground, they spin, they they make no they make noise, this and that. The ones that go into the air, those are illegal in Arizona. So, do not find yourself shooting off fireworks into the air thinking that it is legal because it is not. The next subject that we're going to talk about is going to be Arizona Department of Public Safety, uh, or coming from A dot right, or D DPS. I'm sorry. So if you your first offense for a DUI driving while impaired is a minimum of 24 hours to 10 days. So if you're caught with a DUI, you are going to get a minimum of 24 hours. That's one day in jail. Your second offense is a minimum of 30 days, 30 to 90 days. This is basically telling you do not drink and drive. Okay. The first offense, if I just say that first offense, minimum of 24 hours to 10 days, $250 base fine. License suspension of up to up to a minimum of 90 days, as much as 360 days. Interlock ignition device required. Yes. So that means your license is suspended and they will install an interlock device. Second offense. We already talked about it. 30 to 90 days. $500 base fine. One year license suspension. Interlock device. Third offense. Minimum of four months. $750 base fine. One year license suspension with interlock device so you get your third offense and yeah it's not good so just so you know the body weight the way they calculated here on azdps.gov if you're 100 pounds they're saying once you go over about two drinks you're going to be impaired uh if you're about so my weight i am 200 pounds they're saying one two three three to four drinks Anything beyond three to four drinks, I'm impaired. I would I would say anything in this blue. Uh, so basically, for, for the most part, unless you're a really small person, they're saying three drinks. None of us none of us should be drinking more than three drinks and trying to drive. In fact, there's even these laws that say uh, they can get you for wet and reckless. So if you've even had any sort, if you even have had any alcohol and you get a little reckless, that's a wet and reckless. Okay. Now, they also have some laws here in Arizona about uh, guns. As you know, it's an open carry state. We've made a video uh, specifically about guns, but here's something. Arizona stand your ground self-defense. So what do you need to know about self-defense in Arizona should you need to use this, right? This is a subject that a lot of people are passionate about and a lot of people feel uncomfortable about, but it's there. So... Um, let's see here. Here's the, let me see here. Under Arizona self-defense laws, there's generally no duty to retreat before threatening or using physical force. If you are in a place where you're legitimately or legally permitted to be, and you're not engaged in an unlawful act. So when use of force in self-defense is justified, a person is justified in threatening or actually using physical force, including deadly force if a reasonable person who believe that the force is immediately necessary to protect themselves from the other person's use or attempted use of unlawful physical force. So when the use of force in self-defense is not justified in response to verbal threats only. So if someone's verbally threatening you, you are not authorized to kill them or shoot them. Depending on how intense you guys, some of you guys like to get, I mean, I would say if you ever needed to use a gun, your first reaction should not be to kill them, but to maim them, to slow them, right? It shouldn't be to try and kill them unless they, unless it was literally like the OK Corral and it was a shootout till the death, right? I mean, I, and I, I, even then, would you really want to live the rest of your life with that on your consciousness? 
but it's a, it, it does happen. There are bad guys out there who uh, will come into your house and you have no choice but to defend your family. Resisting arrest from a law enforcement officer. So, <clears throat> that's not a time to use your gun. When an innocent third party is injured or killed by the defendant's reckless actions. Okay. When the defendant provoked the other person's use of force unless the defendant withdrew and clearly communicated their intent to withdraw and to the other person continued to use unlawful physical force. I believe what they're saying there is if someone appears to be using physical force and then surrenders, you don't get to just continue to follow through with your original intent to defend yourself if they've already surrendered is what I believe that's telling you. Now, um, there are a couple other laws. I mean, this is not everything, but this is just some of the main things. So don't cut down cactus. Don't drink and drive. Um, don't smoke medical, don't smoke marijuana without a medical card. Um, I mean, you guys can do whatever you want to do. This is what the law is telling you not to do. And I know whatever, you know, um, some people just are like, well, I'll do it within reason, you know, this and that, but I'm not trying to tell you guys what to do. I'm just telling you what the law is. Don't shoot the messenger here. Um, yeah, let's see what the deal is with some of these unique laws and where they came from. So potlucks are illegal outside the workplace. You cannot have a potluck in Arizona without a, uh, yeah, you just can't. Uh, attempts to do fortune telling and palm reading in Avondale will result in a misdemeanor. So don't be trying to be a, uh, a fortune teller. Additionally, it is unlawful to practice hypnotism or be the subject of hypnotism in that same city of Avondale. So Avondale is not where any of you uh, fortune tellers, tarot card readers should be going. In 1981, the Arizona Territory Legislature outlawed fiestas and public gambling tables. This is on onlyinyourstate.com if you guys want to find this article. But there are casinos on Native American reservations that you can go to. It is illegal to own a wild desert tortoise or release a captive one into the wild. So if you find a desert tortoise, you cannot own that desert tortoise. Okay. So if you find a turtle, don't think, oh, I'm going to make a pet out of it because you can't. A person cannot intentionally activate a crossing signal to stop traffic. Okay, here's another one. You can't ride a horse upstairs at the county courthouse in Prescott, Arizona. Well, you know, okay. It is illegal for more than six girls. It is illegal for more than six girls to live in a house in Maricopa County. This was put in place because of brothels. But now, modern times, girls get into sorority houses sometimes more than six. So I don't know how strict they are on that law. If you are caught stealing soap, you must wash yourself until it is used up. Okay, that's a weird one. In Mojave County. <laughs> in Nogales, it's illegal to wear suspenders. Uh, and you cannot actually refuse anyone a glass of water if they ask you, just so you know. Now you know. Donkeys aren't allowed to sleep in bathtubs. The hunting of camels is prohibited. Yeah, camels. U.S. Army tried camels in Arizona. That's why that's there. There are also some... Uh, some animals that you can't own in Arizona, like chimpanzees. I believe all primates are off the list of pets. Any wild animals, I think, in Arizona. So chimpanzees, foxes, raccoons, crocodiles, rattlesnakes. Don't be trying to make a rattlesnake your, uh, your pet um, because they're saying that's illegal in Arizona. And then, um, what is this one? Laws on exotic pets for each U.S. state. You can see here's some more details on that. Restricted wildlife, non-domestic canines and felines primates, except non-infant primates that are free from zoonatic disease. Alligators, crocodiles, poisonous snakes, and more. Special permits can be issued to special individuals or groups to keep these animals if the request under category is okay. So you can see there are some laws for you pet people out there who want to get exotic pets. Okay, I recommend you look. Do some research on that. What about animal or plants? Well, um, there is one plant that they're saying that is actually outlawed in Arizona. I believe it's called a morning glory. So if you're trying to plant a morning glory, you might want to do some research on it because I don't know the exact details on it. I couldn't find the full explanation behind it, but I believe they said that it's an invasive species. And uh, yeah, morning glory vines. Check into it. 
Anyways, guys, just wanted to make this video. Thanks, everyone, who's been liking these videos and subscribing to Living in Arizona, and we will see you next time.